I'm pleased that you have returned to watch more in this series on fantasy map making. As mentioned in the last episode, we are now going to add lands and mountains. If you are new to Campaign Cartographer 3, I suggest that you go and watch the first video in this series before diving in here, but if you don't mind getting information completely out of order, then stick around. As with the last installment, I have included my complete step-by-step -step guide that covers everything that I'm teaching in this series. This is a 11-page document and it's completely free for download. Uh, you can find it in the description field below, so you don't have to take any notes whatsoever. Let's get into screen sharing. So this is where we left off last time we set up our map in Campaign Cartography 3. So first things first, uh, we're going to add land, but when we add land to the map, it's important to know what ratio between land and sea suits the world best. If you need guidance on this, I cover this in much more detail in my book on map making. But once you have decided how much land you need on the map, then this is where you go and select the tool default land mass. Click that one. Then you'll notice how the sheet up here changed to land. And you'll also notice how the layer changed to coast and sea. The way we add land is by left clicking where we want to start. So I'm going to add one continent here to, to keep things simple. So I'll left click, which will start my adding land. And you can see it's, it starts to draw here. So every few inches or centimeters, depending on how you measure, I'll left click just to kind of fix that point on the map. And as I move around here, Try to also make some base and remember to click quite often and I'll have a, some inlets and I'll move around. You can do it as random or determined specifically as you would like. Now I'm just going to do like this. So I'm going to come around here to where I started more or less. And once I get close to my starting point, what I do then is right click. So once I right click, it automatically automatically connects the two endpoints and gives me my landmass. So I suggest also adding a few islands around the big landmasses. Uh, it'll make your map uh, look a lot more interesting. So let's let's do that. And again, when I get back to my starting point, I right click. Uh, that won't that didn't go very well so that gives me a excuse to show you how to delete so if you go over here select the erase go back to the map and then i left click which make gives me a starting point i then pull over what i want to delete i left click again you can see that it turns uh, white this is what it's gonna delete now, when you do delete, you might end up having to try a few times uh, because it's a bit uh, difficult to control and sometimes you need to use the zoom tools, uh, which is located up here in the right corner, uh, as you might remember from the previous videos. Uh, but once I'm here now, what I do then is right click. If I did make a mistake and I now have something highlighted in white that I don't want to delete, then I would push cancel. But right now I do want to delete this island, so I'll say do it, left click. Okay, so now this is just standard as we covered in previous videos. It's the auto save function, so I'll just press save now. This also gives me the option to show you something I talked about earlier, which is the redraw, redraw tool. So up here you have this redraw, as I said, 
previously the uh, campaign cartographer doesn't refresh in real time so now i press this one redraw and then you see it disappeared so we can go back to our land masses and continue adding some islands hopefully i'll make them look a bit better this time around well there'll be a few of them have a larger one down here and maybe one or two small ones up here okay so to get a rid of that crosshair as i had so as you can see when i'm drawing land i have this crosshair to get rid of it i just right click and it disappears what you'll also notice is here that the uh, campaign cartographer has automatically automatically taken care of making our coastlines fractal which is what we need to do to make our maps look as realistic as possible so next up is mountains so what i prefer to do is go to the zoom tool and zoom in on the area where we want to place the mountains so let's say for this map we want a let's say a line of mountains to go across right here so i'll zoom on this area and then i'm going to place my mountains on this stretch here to place mountains i go to the quick link menu up here press the mountains and you want to choose the cc3 filled mountains what happened here is now that the simple catalog over here on the left has now changed into showing you mountains the ones for the most part that you want to use is the ones which has this kind of r just underneath so you have some large mountains you have normal mountains and small mountains all with the letter r on them you can of course also uh, use great peak you can do glaciers and all kinds of symbols there's volcanoes and what have you not down here but the letter r means random so cam campaign cartographer 3 will help you randomize the exact look of each mountain piece so that every time they look slightly different which is very very handy so when you have made your choice on what kind of mountains you want to add then you click the symbol here and you can see now i'm i'm gonna add these what I, what the first thing i want you to do is right click which is going to bring up this menu here so this scale menu set the x and y scale to 0 0.5 and once you've done that click more so it gives you a more realistic size mountain on the land masses you're now good to start placing the a mixture of mountains across the map and when you do try to be mindful of the different shadows that they cast so what i tend to do is work from left to right and work from top to bottom so i'll place top left first then i'm just making sure that they don't overlap so it looks strange and then i basically go all the way across like this so I will uh, put, on a point, put on a bit of music for you while I do this and uh, then I'll be back when, uh, once I've placed all my mountains here.
Okay, so I'm quite happy with that for now. Once I'm done here, and you probably noticed on the screen a few times that there was a window popping up, so once I'm done, I'm right clicking, and instead of pressing more like we did before, I'm not clicking finish. So you see that the mountain catalog item I had on my cursor now disappeared. So we already covered what to do if you make a mistake. Uh, you will use this editing tool over here to erase. Um, so it's it's fairly fairly easy to uh, to handle as long as you can hit the right piece you want to delete. So you have to play around a bit with that sometimes. If you accidentally end up deleting something on the map that you uh, did not want to delete, um, then you also, as part of the uh, menu up top under edit there is a function called undo so if you use this function you'll get back what you accidentally deleted from the map and again as I said before remember to use the redraw to uh, display those uh, deletions that you made so with all the mountains now placed on the map it will stay zoomed in on them and what you're going to do now is to add some contours around them. Contours will make the greatly enhance the resemblance of real mountains. So select default contour lines. You're now prompted to select the drawing tool. Uh, I like to use contour default 10 for the mountains. So I'll just left click that one. You're now taken back to the map. But you again, you'll notice that the sheet has now changed to contours and the layer is now called Relief Contours. You also have a crosshair cursor again now. That's because it's ready to place the contours. And the process here is exactly the same as when we place the land masses itself. So I'll left click to start and then I'll start moving while I'm left clicking on a continuous basis. So I'm just going to, you don't have to be too precise or accurate here, but I'm just trying to trace around the whole mountains, just slightly on the inside of them, all the way around. Once I get back to where I started, I right click, and then it places this uh, contour on top of the mountains. Once we're done here, right click to get rid of that crosshair cursor. So I'll show you why later that we I wanted you to, to keep you inside the mountains as, as much as possible. It doesn't have to be an exact science, but uh, you'll see why. So next up, go to the tools button and choose the sheets and effects. This brings up a new window again, and we're gonna firstly off, we're gonna tick the box called activate sheet effects if you have no option with the right map size then uh, you can save a new one otherwise select one of the existing templates so you'll have different options uh, you can create a new one by clicking here and then save it so but we are doing a thousand by 800 map here so this one suits my needs in the center of the window you'll see a long list of sheets which the map consists of. And next to each, there are two selection boxes. You can tick both, but for now we're only gonna keep it like it is here with one tick in the first one. This will show you that land masses has a default effect called glow. Now we're gonna select that one and then we're gonna delete it. And we're now gonna we're now going to add a sense of shallow water close to the shoreline. So with the land selected, click Add. And then we're going to pick the one called Glow. At the top, you set the mode to Inside. Under the color scheme, you want R to be 89. G should be 144 and B should be 18. The strength, we are happy with zero. And the blur, we're gonna keep at 2.5. Okay. 
Then repeat the process by adding another glow. This time set the mode to inside and the colors we want 255, 244, 205. Strength we're going to put it 4 and the blur radius is set at 0 0.2. Okay. Repeat the process again and add a third glow. Keep the default mode to outside and set the following colors 255, 240, 189. Strength we are happy with 0, blur radius we are going to put at 50. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the C sheet. So we're going to select that one. Again, add a glow. Put it on inside. We'll keep the black outline. So we'll keep the color coding at zero all the way across. We'll then select two in strength. And we're going to select two in blur radius. Click OK. Add another glow. This one we're going to put on the inside, but we're now looking for kind of a light blue color. So let's see, let's use that one. Then the strength we'll have at zero and the blur radius we'll put at 20. Click OK. Lastly, you're now going to go back to the contours you just added on the mountains just before. So we're going to select Contours Land. On this one, you add what is called a Edge Fade Inner. So this will prompt you for some settings. And on the Edge Width, we're happy with 8. With Inner Opacity, I'll set that to 50. Auto Opacity to 0. Click OK. If you created a new map size template, then I would go ahead and click save again here now, just to make sure it recorded all the changes I did. Now click OK. This will close the wizard. And save now. You're now taking back to the map and it, it redrew itself as you saw. If it does not, you can use the redraw tool up there. Let's try and zoom out. You can see that you now have a map where the land masses stands out nicely. There is a sense of the water becoming more shallow when it hits the coast and the mountains has this sandy base around them. So well done. The map is starting to become more alive now.